Hi, this is Jay again. Uh, I'm going to talk about this documentary uh, submission that has been on YouTube quite a bit. And it's been constantly been taken off, uh, probably, probably because it's so controversial. It seems the Muslims don't want you to see this movie. Now, the fascinating thing to me is the movie itself has references, has scripture verses uh, taken right out of this book, the Quran, and put on a woman's back. And possibly it's that that's the problem, but I think the real problem is what are those verses they don't want you to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up some of the verses that are in that film, and I'm just going to read to you those verses out of the Quran, and let you decide whether or not they need to be censored. Or why is it then that the Muslims are always pulling this film out? Now, let, let me start with the verse, I, uh, Surah 2, Ayah 282, that's Book 2, verse 282 and it says this and if there are not two men available then a man and two women such as you agree for witnesses so that if, if one of them that means the two women errs the other can remind her stipulating that one man has the same testimony as two women proving that women therefore have half the testimony of man I can see why they don't want you to, to see that because that doesn't work today uh, we allow women to have equal vote uh, to a man or a Surah 4, I 11, which says, Allah commands you as regards your children's inheritance, to the male a portion equal to that of two females. Surah 4, I 11, stipulates that women only have half the inheritance of a man. Now that's not equal. Can you see why they don't want you to read that one? But probably the two verses that are the most damaging uh, are Surah 4, I 34. And I'm just going to open up to that one. Surah 4, I 34 talks about the fact that men are the protectors of women. Men are a protector, and I'm going to read it now. Men are the protectors and maintainers of women, because Allah has made one of them to excel the other, and because they spend from their means. Therefore, the righteous women are devoutly obedient, and guard in their husband's absence what Allah orders them to guard. Now, here it comes. As to those women on whose part you see ill conduct, those women who uh, stand against you, admonish them first. Naughty, naughty, don't do it again. Next, refuse to share their beds. Now, stop and think. In most Muslim cultures, a, a woman's whole identity, her whole reason for being is to be child, a child bearer and to cook for the husband. If you throw her from your bed, that's pretty serious because that means you're taking away her whole identity. You're taking away one of the major reasons why she exists. So that's a huge step up from just admonishing her. And then thirdly, beat her. Or beat them, it says. Dadab. Dadab is a word in Arabic, which means scourge. Now, I've heard many Muslims try to say this is to, you're supposed to beat them lightly. If you're supposed to beat them lightly, then why is it the third after three? Why is it you first admonish, throw them from your bed, and then beat them lightly? And some say it like as if you're hitting them with a feather. <laughs> hitting them with a feather after you've already thrown them from your bed? Can you see the sequence? It's obvious that this is a much more serious thing. You are to beat them submit, sub, uh, into submission. Boy! I can see why they don't want this uh, on the film. That's a hard verse. And every time I've shown that to women, they have been astounded. Even Muslim women don't even know that verse is there. But probably the worst verse, and this is the one that I leave to the last. This is the one that really bothers me. And it's hard to read even. It's in Surah 2, and it's Ayah 2, 2, 3. Your wives are your tilth for you, so go to your tilth when or how you will. And you stop and think, goodness sake, what is that saying about women? They are nothing more than our tilth. What is a tilth? Tilth is when you till the ground in a field. You go and you plow the ground. We are to plow our women, according to what the Quran says. Ah, that just proves to me exactly how they view women. No wonder they don't want these verses on the internet. No wonder they're trying to ban this from YouTube. I would too if this was my book. See, we don't have those kind of verses in the, in the New Testament, not at all. Thank God that we do not say that women are, have half the testimony. Look and see, the very first women who were there when Jesus was resurrected from the dead were women. Those were women that Jesus chose to reveal himself to, knowing that their word, their word, would be the more authoritative word when they went home to tell about this resurrection. Remember... It says that women only have half the inheritance. Yet in Galatians it says very clearly, For there is no man, nor woman, Jew, nor Greek, slave, nor free. All are equal in Christ. Thank God we've got that, those verses like that. And nowhere do we have any verse at all 
in the New Testament that says that we can beat our wives. Just the opposite. Ephesians 5, what a great verse. Ephesians 5 says, For God, or Jesus Christ, is to the church as a man is to his wife, and as Jesus Christ is willing to die for the church, so a man should be willing to die for his wife. What a contrast there is between Ephesians 5 and Surah 4, Ayah 34. Now, I don't even want to go into Surah 2, Ayah 223. Just what that says to me concerns concerning a woman in Islam or in the Quran. We don't have anything like that in the Bible. Thank God we don't have anything like that in the New Testament or in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. What we have in the Gospel of Jesus Christ is just the opposite. It frees women up. We don't make them second-class citizens. They don't have half the inheritance. We certainly don't beat them. And we do not only look at them as sexual objects. No, we allow them to even sit at a rabbi's feet. When Jesus was there with Mary and Martha, Martha comes from the kitchen, tells Mary to come back in the kitchen. Jesus says to Martha, go on back to the kitchen. Mary, you sit at my feet. He was turning a thousand years of tradition on its head by saying just that. Aggrandizing and showing that women were equal to men. Thank God for the New Testament. And thank God we don't have to be embarrassed by these kind of verses. We don't have any movies like Submission which eradicate and destroy women's not only integrity, but also their testimony and their witness.